Good morning. <clears throat> I was talking to my doctor the other day, and she said that during COVID, she had given out her private contact information, cell phone, private email to her elderly patients because she was feeling that perhaps they needed that extra, that extra care when they felt like they were isolated from everybody else. But she told me, she said, I think it's time to put the boundaries back in place. I'm getting videos from cats and birthday parties. <laughs> and then yesterday I was talking to a friend of mine about this election cycle and how for her and many, they felt, um, I mean, this endless cycle, right? It's over, but it really almost isn't over. How pummeled she felt. How um, beat up and worn out she felt by this cycle. And how she's decided that going forward, she's not going to worry about anything that she has no control over. Sounds like a pretty smart decision to me. <laughs> and I feel similarly. I have stopped following all of the politicians and lawmakers that I followed during this political cycle. And I just find that for peace of mind and peace of heart, um, there, the, the, the election did a, a real number on me and there was kind of a weird magnet, magnetism kind of um, almost an addictive quality to wanting to follow things that were negative and not helpful at all. So I'm done with that. And it's so interesting that we would voluntarily opt to see things and plug into things that we know cause us unrest. Why would we do that when life already foists so much upon us that we have no say in? I'm well reminded of the two, the three summers that I spent in New York City in the Bronx when I was in uh, getting my graduate degree at Fordham University. And when I had my orientation in the dean's office, he said, so Monique, for the next six weeks, you are in the Bronx, New York. You're not in your home territory. And just a word of advice, he said. He said, I would recommend, he said, you're going to need to get some groceries. You're going to need to get some personal things in these six weeks. I'd recommend you stick to Arthur Avenue and one street to the left of it and one street to the right of it. And that's it. You've got a three street corridor in which I could pretty much guarantee your safety. But after that, I can't make any promises. And so that's what I did for, for six weeks, three summers in a row. I limited myself to this corridor, Arthur Avenue now. That's, that's little Italy, right? <laughs> that was no punishment. The best bakeries, the best coffee shops. I mean, handmade everything. It was fabulous. But it was a corridor. It was a safe corridor. And that's where I'm going again this year. I'm going to limit myself to a safe corridor, to um, a, a limited access to things that I know will disrupt my peacefulness and cause me chaos within. It's so important for me to be picky right now. And so in order to, to do that, to really sift and pay attention and be particular about what I let within myself so that I can continue to hear the voice of the divine over the clamor and noise of this world, that's what I'm going to do. And maybe that's something that interests you as well. I mean, <laughs> really, it's about choosing what we let within instead of feeling like life is storming our castle. This could be the wisest decision you make all year. Boundaries, safe corridors, choosing what we digest and what we choose not to digest. There's a lot to be learned from that. I'm going to start now. <laughs>